Okay, so I just finished this, um, filling this art journal from the time we were in shelter in place until just recently. And I love it. It's nice and chunky and full. However, because the pages expand like they do with all the layers, you see how it, it just doesn't lay flat anymore. And I also wanted to paint the front of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually split the spine. Let's see, just like this. So when you look at the spine, it's actually not attached right there. So I'm just going to split that. And I feel like that's going to allow me to relieve some of that, relieve some of the uh, pull and flatten this out a little bit. And it actually, it's not making this come over anymore, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to replace this, this paper right here with a little bit of sticky back canvas. And so I'm going to reinforce the spine covering. I've cut a piece of sticky back canvas, and this is literally canvas with a sticky backing. I saw this in my shop. Um, I measured around so that I'd be able to wrap it and have a nice spine covering on here. So I'm going to go ahead and start to unpeel on one side, line it up. Remember, I'm going to paint over this so it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but there we go. Wrapping it around. I've um, got the book closed. I'm pulling it around to the other side. This is a Stillman and Burn mixed media journal. All right, so there. I've got it recovered. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply gesso to the front of this so that I can um, paint over it with a good priming coat. So, gesso is like primer for your walls. It has some calcium carbonate in it, uh, which is like a chalky substance, and um, a polymer binder like your acrylic paint and titanium white pigment. So it's nice for prepping the surface. It gives the surface some tooth or grip so that you're able to uh, paint over it. It really helps the paint stick. Calcium carbonate is the trick. So it's not just white acrylic paint like titanium white acrylic paint would be. It's the addition of the calcium carbonate that helps it. So usually I do this with an old hotel key card, but for some reason I just grabbed a palette knife to spread this out. I don't typically use my brushes, or at least definitely not my good brushes, with gesso because it does dry um, and on the brush and wreck the brush if you let it dry on the brush. So just applying a nice surface. I'm going to go ahead and open the journal up. I'm going to obviously not paint this part while it's all wet. Access on here, so I'm sure I switch over to my star, my uh, hotel key card because I do find that easier to spread the paint out with. So it's nice and spread out. I am going to go ahead and get a, kind of an old chip 
brush to smooth this out a little bit. Let's see if I've got one here. This is uh, just an old chip brush. This is great for spreading out gesso, but just make sure you rinse it out of your bristles. Then I'm going to let this dry. You can scribe in. I do like to scribe in and make marks through the gesso. But we're going to let it dry. And then we'll get some paint on it. Okay, so the gesso is all dry, and now I'm ready to start layering in some patches of color. Now I'm going to use the paints I'm going to use this weekend in retreat just so that I can uh, get real familiar with what they're looking like when they go down. So I'm going to pick some cool colors for the background. So that's my blue, green, a little bit of white, and because I like to make different hues of, the, of these um, greens and aquas. I'll go ahead and throw a little yellow in there. So, where I'm going to start this is I will do some little dots of color in several spots. And I'm also going to throw some white in here because I like to have tints of the colors as well. So don't go too heavy with the paint because I don't want there to be a whole lot of excess. I'm just going to take a flat brush and start with the lightest color and start to dry brush this out. So the gesso should be pretty grippy for this paint to attach to. And by dry brushing, I am uh, meaning I'm not going to add any excess water at this point. I'm also going to dip into some of the white, not all of it, leave some of the white for the other colors as well. But just to get a tint of this color into the mix. So I'm going to finish off with the white at each step. Then I'm going to go to the green and do the same thing. So I notice that I didn't rinse my brush in between. I'm just going from one color to the next. This will blend these colors. And then on into that blue. So I can still see some of the yellow we need. Um, I can still see some of the green we need. 
And so while paint is still wet, just dry it in and then you will put the color underneath. And then we're going to go ahead and get this layer dry. I am going to open the spine up and get some color. I've got plenty left on the edge of my brush. It's okay if everything, everything is not completely, completely covered. But we're going to go ahead and get this dry before the next layer. Okay, so everything is dry. Now to get some more layers on here. Definitely want to come in with some warmer colors now. So for that, I'm going to go with some, some red. And make some orange. Again, limited by the palette that I'm working from, which is fine. It's good to work with a limited palette sometimes, but you can use any colors you want. And I'm going to grab some of my favorite stencils. So I'm going to start laying in with white first. That really helps my color, if it's transparent, it helps my color pop off the surface. So laying in white first is usually a trick. That I use. So when I'm stenciling, I like to use small, medium, and large marks.
back into this that I just created. So I'm going to take some of the colors that are back there and just sort of smudge them in. And into that wet paint, I'm going to take a um, wet wipe. what I'm doing is I'm scratching back to that original um, book surface as well. So I'm scratching through the, through the gesso all the way down to the, to the base. But that's interesting because it's showing through this really neat dark that also makes me think that maybe I needed to, sh to um, sand my surface before I um, to now for future times of doing this. All right, go ahead and get some book paper and apply a little bit of text to the surface. You're going to put a
this as I'm taking some matte medium, putting it on the surface. I do you want to stamp some blue over top of this?
because the, the splines don't get in there. The splines are hard to crack it, so the power is very low. And because we're on the corner, it seems to rotate and fit it in. You know, maybe this edge. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in a little bit of black. And I'm probably going to go back to stenciling for this. I might do a little bit of stamping, but stenciling is an easy way to get this down. I just want some fine marks in here. Where would it go? I mean, when you're pulling it, when you're pulling it out, it's going to go down. And when you're any other direction, it's not going to go down. Think about without the back door. the back door. I'm doing some gray as well. I do want to do some like bigger and shapes on it, but I wonder if we're going to get this dry and think about it. Okay, so I think the way I'm going to finish this up is I'm going to cut some masks um, to be some shapes on there, and I'm going to go with a big circle. Protect and also be like more powder laid out. And then I'm going to dry brush. I'm going to dry brush there. I'm going to dry brush some gesso. I'm going to cover top of this. And your gesso can be tinted for this. It doesn't have to be totally white. Um, some of the other colors I have on my. What I'm going to do is just take that gesso on the, on the mask first and just dry brush out from there. So I'm not covering absolutely everything up. You're still seeing a lot of the marks and pattern and that sort of thing. But what's going to happen is this is really going to help focus on these cute little pop areas that I really want you to see. And again, I'm not covering absolutely everything. I'm just, it's like putting a gauze curtain in the top of this. Okay. 
And then I'm going to take a black Stabilo Marks All pencil and really accentuate. When you activate this like matte medium, which is like blue, when you activate this with matte medium, it smudges up a little bit. I've got another brush right here, but I do like the look of using it on this. And it's the matte medium actually sets this so that it won't wipe off. Note that this is the front cover of my journal and while I'm done with the pages on the inside, it will still be handled somewhat, maybe not as rigorously as when I was working in it, but it will still be handled for me to look back on. So I do want this to be durable. I'm going to finish this whole cover off with a little bit of Darlin's wax just to protect the surface and keep it waterproof after the fact. I mean, you see what's happening here. But for the most part, with all of the acrylic mediums that I've used in this entire process, I shouldn't have a problem with things coming off, wiping away, not being waterproof, and so on. Okay. So that, my friends, is where I'm going to leave it right now. Probably not going to leave it here overall, but for this video, um, that's where I'm going to leave it. I will come back in um, off camera and do all the little detail work and I'll show you what that looks like for all the little detail work when everything is dry. I like to come around things with black pen. I like to come in with white pen and add little dots. This like that is dry, so that one. I like to come in with pasta paint markers and add marks, especially dots with these. The Posca PC 5Ms are my absolute favorites for adding dots. And even when that dries, you can come around those and make marks as well. Let's see, some red. Can do some red up here. And so I can keep coming in and adding more details to the inside. But black outlines, dots, both white and black. And color dots, and then I'll come in and I'll outline those as well. But this is how I've gussied yeah. up the cover of my art journal. It's gone that's from what, sort of grungy blue and very well used to intentionally grungy and well used. So anyway, I hope you like that, and I would love to see what you make.